Welcome back to part two of our look into the Emirates Team New Zealand writing moment machine. Previous episode, we looked at how they could possibly move weight out to windward on the raised foil. And we also talked about how they've lowered the center of effort in their rig. But today we get on to the big ticket items and that's all about the center of lift in the leeward foil. We'll have a little bit of discuss about how they're moving that further away from the boat, both in terms of the T-shaped foil and a clever little trick with canting out a little bit further and letting the tips come out of the water. So two really interesting points. If you've not watched the previous episode, then feel free or don't, whatever, it's the internet, do what you like. But we're going to dive into the second episode now with Rob Gullen and Tom Partington. Right, let's talk about what we think is probably the most significant writing moment gain. That comes from where the lifting surface is in the foil that's in the water. So this one's a bit of a, a bit of a, a head scratcher in terms of just getting your head around where the writing moment comes in these boats. So um, just to cover that off, as soon as the boats are foiling, the boats aren't kind of rotating or pivoting around the keel anymore the center line of the hull get that complete out of your head in fact you can kind of forget the hull as anything other than just connecting the sails to the foil so the boats are kind of pivoting around this center of lift in the lured foil and where that center of lift sits within the rule box depending on the shape and configuration of their setup is basically the final piece in the puddle of this writing moment um, question. So, Rob, do you want to first explain what the, the difference in the geometry is and the implication of that before we bring Tom in on, on the on the differences in speed? Yeah, yeah. Well, and actually, just just thinking about this in general, it, it's even more complex than we've just summed up because you've also got the rudder in the water and the elevator there. So, the the boat. To, to say the boat's rotating around the centre of pressure of the lured foil is definitely not true, but it's not a bad place to to make the assumption. Um, so that, that, that just, <laughs> it just makes it even more difficult to. It does make it. It, it makes it too complicated yeah. for us with yeah. the tools available yeah. to us to analyse. But the only thing. The only thing you can say there on on that point is basically lifting or it's sucking down and that will be added or subtracted from what you're doing with the main foil. However, um, you know, all the kind of writing moment that you get from just putting weight out to windward of that um, centre of lift in the leeward foil is kind of free writing moment. You're not you're not creating that with any induced drag. Or and you're not losing out of any induced drag. That's just kind of weight out, weight out to windward of the lifting surface. So, yeah, so it's yeah. kind of a key area to focus on, isn't it? Uh, and I think let's ju let's just assume effectively that the centre of pressure is equivalent to the leeward hull of a multi hull, in, in this sense. Yeah. And the more yeah. the the more mass or the further you extend that mass to windward at that point, the more writing moment you're going to have. Um, so you, you've got the T and you have got the anhedral, um, and if you sp if split each of those into their two foil wings, each of those foil wings will have a centre of lift that's going to be approximately where the centre of area is. And if you draw a straight line between those and then mark the midpoint of that straight line, that's where the centre of lift for the, the whole foil will be. So on the T, that straight line between the two points will be just through the T of the foil. It'll be running parallel and through the, the section. And the midpoint of that would be where where the bulb is. So the, the intersection between the vertical and the horizontal of the T. With the anhedral, if you draw that straight line between the two midpoints of the wings, the center point of that is clearly below the, the bottom of the bulb. And the more anhedral you have, the more below the centre of the bulb that'll be eventually. You, you just got to visualise this virtual point that is within the within the anhedral section. So, and again, if we if we take the, the most extreme anhedral 
you're allowed on this rule gives you 700 mil less strut. So you'll end up with a center of pressure that's sitting in this virtual space, 350 mil below the bottom of the bulb on that anhedral. Um, and that's this that's the, this effective point. Yeah. Um, and, and well, and this this tricked us initially when we were looking at it because we we kind of assumed that the center of the bulb, the the vertical horizontal intersection, was the point that we were looking at our our moments around, and that probably led us to judge the anhedral a bit harshly. But now we've looked at it again, we're we're comparing apples with apples, really. Agreed. Yeah. So even allowing for the fact that this um, this uh, center of uh, lift, center of pressure is is below the bulb of the anhedral and is, and is further out to leeward than the bulb of the anhedral is, um, there's still a writing moment gain for the T fall and the T fall that kind of center of lift is right on the edge of the box, whereas it's about 350 mil further up into the box that's not a full 330 mil to windward but it is to windward um so tom can you talk us through you know what that looks like and what that means in terms of speeds and writing moment yeah um so what what rob's just described there so the difference between uh the center of lift coming from the bulb uh this is on the anhedral foil uh and the the, the kind of the floating center of lift um, that actually equates to another 123 mil uh, the center of lift being 123 mil, mil further outboard than we originally anticipated so that's that's further outboard from this, the center line of the hull if you're then to look at the uh, the t-foil uh, for emirates team new zealand that continues so you end up with the centre of lift being further outboard uh, from the centre line of the hull. So Luna Rossa's, uh, the distance to the centre of lift is uh, 5.634 metres. And, and for the equivalent for New Team New Zealand is 5.732 metres. So you're looking at basically another 100 mil. So when you think of You've got 100 mil times by um, 7.5 tons. Uh, it basically equates to an extra 1.7% increase in writing moment. And just to step in here to just just put this in context of why the gain on the leeward side is so much, you know, because we talked about moving the foil out on the windward side, and it was a tiny, a, a tiny increase in writing moment, but moving the moving the lifting surface or pushing the further lifting surface per further to leeward is so significant because it's best not to really think it of it as moving the lifting surface further to leeward think of it as moving the whole yacht the whole weight the whole center of gravity of the whole thing further out to windward that's effectively what you're doing here and that's why it's more significant when we look at where the position of the leeward foil is and the leeward lift is rather than looking at any where any weight is located on the very windward side of the yacht i think that's just a, a fair thing to say and just a concept to get your your head around when you think about why this is so such a um such a game bro game changer even though it's a relatively small difference yeah yeah uh, well said well said mozzie the additional part to this, and this is something that in the higher wind speeds Emirates Team New Zealand are exploiting, is that they're actually canting their T foil even further out. They cant it another three, potentially another three degrees more, and this allows them to have an even bigger writing moment gain. So even though that their tips are uh, protruding the surface, they're losing some of their, their foil area. Um, this, um, yeah, this additional cant gives them a 2.3% increase in writing moment over Luna Rossa. Now, this is quite a tricky concept and isn't completely intuitive, so I'll go over it a bit more. Now, you might think as the foil tip comes out of the water, that removes the lift from that part of the foil, 
and therefore the centre of lift moves inboard. And that is true. However, the loss of outboard lift is more than negated by the fact the foil is canted out further and the remaining foil is further to leeward. This means Emirates Team New Zealand are making a writing moment gain from extreme cant angles despite their outboard tip coming out of the water. It also means they've got less strut in the water and less foil wing in the water. So um, the difference between uh, where Emirates foils are breaking the surface and Luna Rossi, you're basically talking about an extra 135 mil of leverage. Uh, that the hull is away from the foil. So how does that relate into speed differences? Well, this is where it starts to get slightly more uh, complicated because you also, when we're looking at the speed, you've got to look at the total wetted surface area of each yacht and then all the associated sails, etc. So it's, it's obviously not a simple system. Uh, so we've just looked there at how maximum increase in writing moment for Emirates Team New Zealand over Luna Rossa is about 2.3%. So looking at those same three configurations in terms of hydrodynamic drag, uh, we can see that uh, Luna Rossa have a total wetted surface area of approximately 2.19 uh, square metres. Uh, Team New Zealand with the foils fully submerged uh, at 1.97 square metres, so that's a 10% reduction in wetted surface area over Luna Rossa. Uh, and then when we start looking at this, the higher wind speed uh, Team New Zealand with the same the tips out, um, they get a further 16% reduction in their wetted surface area. So their wetted surface area drops down to 1.83 meters squared. So how does... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's mental, isn't it? Yeah, they've got a bit more writing moment, but they've got they've got 15% less wetted surface area. Yeah, yeah. And so this is, this is where it starts to, you can start to build a picture of how you can get to uh, relative speed differences. So uh, putting these, what we relatively known parameters, that there's, there's a little bit, of, there's an element of guesswork into the, the center of effort, but we kind of have a good idea of the foil areas. We know the writing moments because we know what the foil has to lift. We've assumed that both yachts weigh the same. Um, and so we can start to build a forces diagram of looking at the thrust of the sail, uh, the net writing moment, and then the kind of the overall drag. In 17 knots, uh, true wind speed, both running a full main and a J4 jib, and anticipating Luna Rossa to have an upwind speed of approximately 36 knots. So comparing that to uh, Team New Zealand, so sailing with their foils fully submerged, again, 17 knots, true wind speed, uh, full main J4, looking at an upwind boat speed of 37.5 knots. That's approximately a 4% speed increase. So that's 10% less wetted surface area in it and a 1.7% increase in writing moment. And then last of all, looking at how much Team New Zealand sailing with their tips out of the water, upwind boat speed of 38.7 knots. So in the same 17 knots true wind speed, we could be seeing as much as a 7.5% difference in boat speed. If you were sailing around in a club race and someone was going 7.5% quicker, you, you, you would know about it pretty quickly. I think I mean, what, what this kind of shows is that Luna Rossa has got to be a lot more refined. Like, to 
to save to save that drag deficit back with say better section selection and fancier engineering it is impossible <laughs> I, I don't want to say impossible but but it it cut it it almost is it's impossible around. it's impossible yeah. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. I think for me, the take home points there were really how much of a increase you can get in writing moment by moving this center of lift down to leeward further away. And just to get your head around the fact that it's not just moving the center of lift further away. Think of it more in the terms of moving the whole boat, the whole mass of the yacht further to windward and the improvement you get in writing moment from that. Um, but I guess the other thing that struck me was just how Emirates Team New Zealand are able to cant further out than the other boats and sail with their tip out the water. And at first I thought they'd be losing writing moment for that because they're losing foil area out wide. But actually that's negated by the fact that the kind of the cant arm goes out further. Um, really interesting that they managed to sail the boat like that and again the less wetted surface area is seeing them with some huge um, speed gains predicted by tom's vpp so really looking forward to the sailing now interested to see how accurate the uh, predictions are and um, yeah one last thing though there is a sneaky little trick that luna rossa have up their sleeves in terms of full control and we'll talk about that in a future a future video but um for now some pretty impressive uh, engineering and physics from emirates team new zealand so yeah thanks for watching and uh yeah let's get into some racing <laughs>